Welcome to the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast. My name is Ivars Östuna and I'm the founder and CEO of Geospatial Intelligence Institute and Master of Science in Geospatial Intelligence candidate at the Johns Hopkins University. Geospatial Intelligence, an emerging field. We'll be talking everything about it. Let's begin. Geospatial science is a science that is centered on the utilization of information technology to retrieve an understanding regarding the people on Earth, places on Earth, and the Earthy phenomenon that takes place. In order to have the information analysis that is received through using the means of geospatial application, it is essential for the scientists to base their analysis on discipline. There are commonly used analytical tools in geospatial science, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. The measurement tools, observational tools, and analytical tools that can be utilized for information retrieval in geospatial science, such as remote sensing, geographic information systems, which is GIS, and global positioning systems, which is GPS technologies. When it comes to science, discipline is something on which a scientific method is based. It is the foundation for a scientist to begin their procedure of searching for scientific methods to answer unanswered questions and draw conclusions from the results. Discipline bridges the gap between the human and physical sciences. There are three basic types of imaging through which information is retrieved to conduct analysis and research. These three basic types of imaging are visible imaging, spectral imaging, and radar imaging. Visible light imaging is an imaging modality that uses visible light. A visible camera sensor is a sensory image definer that tends to collect visible light between 400 to 700 nanometers. Visible cameras have the tendency to utilize wavelengths of light from 400 to 700 nanometers, which is the same spectrum that the human eye perceives. Visible cameras are invented for the image's creation that would be a replica of the image being seen by a human using their bare eyes. The imaging camera captures light in red, green, and blue wavelengths for accurate color representation. Now let's talk briefly about spectral imaging, which is imaging for remote sensing. When scientists were conducting research on finding an alternative to high spatial resolution and large aperture satellite imaging systems, they come up with spectral imaging. Spectral imaging was used for sensing terrestrial features and objects remote sensing. It was also specifically used for ground cover classification, mineral exploration, and agricultural assessment prior to being utilized for the enhancements that we have been gifted by technology and science. With time and technology, numerous improvements have been introduced in sensor imaging, which caused the continuation of multispectral imaging sensor applications. There are many practical issues for the fundamentals of spectral imaging, but they must be addressed in the design and implementation of a spectral imaging system. These issues have an inclusion of special and spectral resolution of the sensor and atmospheric effects, including absorption and scattering. Other means utilized 
are the spectral variability of surface materials in the scene as well as other environmental effects which are viewing angle, secondary illumination and shadowing. For a scientist working on collecting information through spectral imaging, the best detection performance is expected when the angular resolution of the sensor specified in terms of the GSD in commensurate with the footprint of the targets of interest. The targets mentioned here are comprised of different sizes. Some targets can turn out to be specially resolved for the provided sensor design. However, some of them may be able to just to fill in a small portion of the GSD footprint, which would be applicable in defining a pixel. Therefore, detection and identification algorithms must be designed to be well functional despite the presence of a completely resolved target or fractional target provided in pixels. The atmosphere tends to absorb and scatter light in a wavelength-based manner. This absorption and scattering have spectral implications that work as hurdles when working on sensor imaging. The atmosphere modulates the spectrum of solar illumination prior to it reaching the ground. This modulation is measured to separate the spectrum of the illumination from the reflectivity, which then characterizes the materials of interest. As the solar illumination angle and the viewing angle of the sensor change, the total path through the atmosphere changes, which in turn affects the total atmospheric transmission. Also, the water vapor distribution alongside the aerosol characteristics of the atmosphere tends to have variations in location and time. Hence, the methods of compensating for these effects must be scene-based. There would be a few solar radiations scattered by the atmosphere in the sensor's field of view without ever reaching the ground. This scattered light would be superimposed on the reflected light which will be termed path radiance because it would appear along the line of sight path to the scene. The solar radiation that would be scattered by the atmosphere would fall in the blue region of the visible spectrum. They would act as the secondary source of diffusing colored illumination. This diffuse sky illumination is most important for shadowed objects because regions that are shadowed from the direct rays of the sun may still be illuminated by the diffused non-white sky radiation. The solar illumination that reaches the scene gets reflected by the target. It is then absorbed and scattered by the atmosphere as it propagates toward the sensor. A number of methods are in utilization to have an estimation as well as compensation for these atmospheric propagation effects. The environmental effects also contribute to having an influence on spectral imaging alongside atmospheric absorption and scattering and other prominent environmental parameters. The sun angle relative to the zenith the sensor weaving angle and the surface orientation of the target all affect the amount of light reflected into the sensor field of view. There could be occasional shadows being cast by clouds which then shadow the target, resulting in the changes taking place in the surface's illimitation. The objects nearing the target may also cause reflection or scattering of sunlight on the target hence resulting in a vivid illumination upon the dominant direct solar illumination. There would be a consistency in the spectral shapes, but it wouldn't minimize the variation in amplitudes. In order to further study the variation in spectral shape, some detection algorithms could be utilized to properly functionalize information retrieval from the spectral shape in comparison to the spectral amplitude which would help in the determination of whether or not a given material is present in a pixel. Spectral imaging sensors tend to exploit sensor platform motion for properly scanning a scene. However, a sensor's nonlinear motion may result in the corruption of the spectral image. 
which is caused by the mixing of the spectral returns from the special image's various parts. There can also be a creation of the artifacts due to the object's motion, specifically if the motion is influenced by the GSD during the integration time. This special migration can degrade the quality of the image, but it is not as significant as the spectral migration in terms of impact on subsequent processing, which is utilized for detecting and identifying various materials. The imaging, including the detection and conversion of the radiance to a digital sequence, introduces a number of artifacts. They include thermal noise, quantization, and geometric distortion. Radar imaging. Radar imaging retrieves information in the form of a picture that may look similar to the picture taken by a camera. The only difference in radar imaging is that the picture taken to retrieve information is taken through the mean of radar waves instead of visible light. Let's provide an example. Ice formation in the sea tends to have a stronger reflection over radar energy transmitted by the sensor than the surrounding ocean waters. Resultantly, it provides an ease in differentiating the two. The amount and characteristics of reflected energy are sea ice's physical properties and functionality, which may become complex. Hence, it tends to result in an occurrence of difficulty and compl complexity in interpreting radar images of ice on the sea. The real aperture imaging radar sensor also uses an antenna. This antenna illuminates the surface to one side of the flight track. The antenna is comprised of a fan beam that illuminates a highly elongated elliptical shaped area on the surface. Scientific Aperture Radar, which is SAR, SAR, is a side-looking imaging radar that mostly operates on an aircraft or a spacecraft. The radar transmits a series of short and coherent pulses to the ground, which then produces a footprint with its size inversely proportional to the antenna size and its aperture. Because the antenna size is generally small, the footprint is large, and any particular target is eliminated due to various hundred radar pulses. Intensive signal processing involves the detection of small Doppler shifts in the reflected signals from targets to the moving radar, producing a high-resolution image that is equivalent one retrieved by a radar. The resulting larger aperture is the synthetic aperture and is equal to the distance traveled by the spacecraft. The radar antenna collects information about the target. SAR techniques depend on the specific determination of the relative position and velocity of the radar with respect to the target and the strong procession of the signal received. You'll start to get in that knowledge of different aspects of this new field of science that is still developing as it is an ever-evolving field of science. If you would like to have a variety of sources, feel free to follow geospecialintelligenceinstitute.org. My name is Aybars Östuna and this is the Geospatial Intelligence Podcast. <laughs>